Okay. I'm going to try and do this message dressed as Moses tonight. We'll see how that goes. All right. Jesus, give me strength, all right? Give me strength tonight. All right, friends. I'll just give you guys a minute to go take a seat. Batman, Superman, Elsa. Yes. Love the capes. Love the capes. All right. Can I get some help with uh, Alex here? She doesn't mean anything by it, but she tends to walk back and forth during the message, and I could use some help with Alex. All right. Are we all comfortable? All right. So I don't have to do this too often. I'm not taking any questions, okay? A comment? Okay. So just to give you guys a heads up, please do your best to keep your voices down to a minimum. If you need to talk, try and whisper, because I don't like having to talk over you guys. It's pretty difficult with a lot of people around, okay? I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do an announcement for next month's gathering, okay? We are doing a special need Thanksgiving celebration, all right? I hope you guys choose to be with us for Thanksgiving. We will have a Thanksgiving meal here that we're going to serve for you guys. All right? It's going to be all about giving thanks. We're going to play games, Thanksgiving games. We're going to have turkey and some, I think, cornbread stuffing. You guys ever had cornbread stuffing? Yeah? Yeah. I've never had it, but I guess we're going to have it this time. Yes. I see smiles. Some people have had cornbread stuffing. I see you, Savannah. I see you. <laughs> All right, um, so please come. It's November 14th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., okay? And we're going to charge for dinner that time, too, all right? It'll be a $15 dinner, but it'll be a lot of food for that dinner. And it'll be a Thanksgiving. We're going to have turkey, stuffing, I don't know. What do people normally eat for Thanksgiving? Ham. Well, no, we won't have ham. We're having ham for Christmas, okay? Yes, we're having ham for Christmas. But cornbread, we have all that good stuff. All right. You guys want to come? You guys all planning to come for Thanksgiving? Good. That's what I want to hear. I want you guys to be here for our Thanksgiving celebration. Okay. So I want to pray before we start. All right. Please bow your heads. Father God, I want to thank you so much because all these people chose to be here tonight to celebrate with us, to come to fellowship to learn something about you. I pray that you speak to me and that I convey this message in a very clear manner so they can understand and take it in and learn more about you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay. I love the costumes. I love all the hero costumes. We're celebrating Hero Night tonight. And why we're celebrating Hero Night tonight is because we all pretty much love a good hero story, right? I don't know if you guys knew that, but Almost everyone likes a good hero story. That's why I see all these superhero outfits. That's why I see people like Noah. I love it. Um, that's, that's why Moses, I'm dressed as Moses because he is one of my biblical heroes. Yes, take a seat, Adam, take a seat. Okay, you can hug me, all right. <laughs> love it, Zorro is Adam's hero. I love the hero outfits because we all love a good hero story. Would you guys say, I think at least, when you think about heroes, you guys usually think about this. First slide, please. Someone like that, like Superman. Or for you ladies out there, next slide. Wonder Woman. I see a lot of Wonder Womans tonight. Yes. Those are usually the, the heroes that we think of because movies and TV and other stories that we hear like to teach us. They don't tell you this right away, but they like to tell you that that's what a hero is. A hero is like a superhero that has supernatural powers, that's, that's always the strongest one and always good, hardly ever bad or never bad. And that's not real. That's not, that's not realistic because if you come to church for a while, even if you come for a little bit, you've learned what sin is, right? You guys know what sin is, right? Yeah. Sin means that we are not always good, even though we try really hard. Sometimes we're bad. We try and be good the best that we can, but because we have sin, sometimes we're not so good. Sometimes we're afraid 
Sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do. And that's why Jesus came to save us. You guys know that. Most of you know that, right? Yeah, okay. So the world has a definition of a hero like this. Next slide. A person with unusual bravery, unusual goodness, and unusual strength. Like I said, those are all qualities that we all look up to. We, all, we wish we were always brave. We were always good. We wish we could lift buildings and shoot lasers out of our eyes and fly like Superman. But we can't. That's not realistic. So I want to give you an example in my life. No matter how hard I try, I can't always be the best or good or I can't always do the right thing. And um, I'm going to tell you a personal story about myself. Next slide. So I'm going to explain this. Why palm trees in a second? Rick, if you can keep that up until I explain this. Um, I first want to tell you one of my fears. I actually am afraid of bees and wasps. They frighten me. Who here is afraid of bees or wasps? Wow, quite a bit of you. All right, I don't feel so bad. Okay, so the reason I'm afraid of these things is because years ago, I got stung in the leg, and it hurt really bad. But that wasn't the worst part about it. The worst part about it was that my legs started to swell up really bad. And they had to take me to the hospital. And I spent all night until the next morning getting shots every two hours to get the swelling to go down. So I would like fall asleep and then they'd wake me up, a nurse, stick needle in my leg, fall asleep, wake me up two hours later, stick a needle in my leg. It was horrible. I'm not taking questions right now, okay? Um, so because of that, every time I see bees or wasps, I'm like, oh, Okay, I'd rather avoid it. I don't want to be anywhere near that. Well, now I'm going to explain why the palm trees. We have palm trees in my house. We have them in the back of the house and in the front of the house. And we have two that pretty much are in the front of the patio when you walk up to the front door. So my wife runs a daycare from our house. She takes care of other children's little babies, and she's amazing at it. And because we run a daycare, we run a business from our house, we want to keep it, she wants to keep it very clean and professional and welcoming to the parents when they drop off children. And she asks me to cut the palm trees to make it nice and neat. But sometimes I get so busy that the branches start to hang down. They fall and they look all sloppy in front of the house. And this one time, it was on like a Friday, she asked me to cut them. Hey, can you cut the palms? I'm like, sure, babe, no problem. I actually like cutting them. It's kind of fun. But you see those fruits you see there? Yeah, sometimes they grow flowers. And whenever they grow flowers, all these bees come. Like not even, a, not two or three, a whole swarm of bees. And they stay there until they pollinate all the flowers. And sometimes they are there for days. So when she asked me on Friday, I went to go check and there were the bees. So I'm like, okay, I'll try the next day. So I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. That's when I wake up. And there were the bees. They were still there. So I, Sunday came. And then Monday came, and it was the day that parents were going to drop off all their children. And it was like a couple hours before. And I woke up really early, hoping there were no bees. And there were the darn bees. Yes. So I'm like, oh, man, I don't, I don't want to cut these palms. I don't want to get stung. And then my voice, my selfish voice, my, my sinful voice was telling me, just don't worry about it. Don't get stung doesn't matter if she wants that like don't worry about it like it's better that you don't hurt yourself so I'm like yeah you know what you're right you're right and I wasn't gonna do it and then I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me and he goes you know what the right thing to do is right and I was like yeah you're right I should just go out and do it and get stung and it says no you're supposed to ask me for help and I didn't like he was right I'm like you're right Lord I should have prayed to you I should have asked you to help me so I prayed, I prayed, I asked for courage, and I went out there, and I'm not even joking, when I was cutting the palm trees, I was like a scared little chicken. I was just like, <gasps> but I didn't get stung once, all right? I didn't get stung one time, and I cut the palm branches, and praise God Almighty, I got that done. Yes, oh, you can clap, that's okay, you don't have to clap. So, 
Why am I telling you this story? Because I want to prove to you that it's common for us not to always do the right thing, to be selfish, to sometimes not be good. It's so common for us to do it. Even your pastor does it quite often, more than, once, more than he wants to admit, okay? So because it's so hard for us to do that, the world's definition of a hero is something we can never achieve. But you might be surprised that God's definition of a hero is different. It's hard, but it's not impossible because if you include God in everything that you do, it is possible, okay? So I'm going to give you more on that by reading a Bible verse to you in Galatians 5, 13 to 14. And, it's, and I'll explain it after I read it. God called you to be free, but don't use your freedom as an excuse to do the things that please your sinful selves. Serve each other with love. The whole law is made complete in this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm going to explain that. So what this passage is saying is that if you love Jesus, you are saved. You are saved from the punishment of sin. That makes you free from sin, free from the punishment of sin. And what this passage is saying that when you are free from sin, when you have been saved, Jesus expects you to not live like you used to live before you knew Jesus. He expects you to not live a selfish life only living for yourself. He expects you to live a life that is unselfish, thinking of others and loving others more than you love yourself. That's what he wants from you because he did that for you by doing what? Dying on the cross. Good. Very good. I did that to test you guys to see if you were listening. <laughs> okay. So next slide. So the God's definition of a hero, the Bible's definition of a hero is someone who trusts and obeys God and puts others' needs before their own. That is God's definition of a hero. And when you trust God, we can actually achieve that and be a hero in our own lives. And just to prove it to you, I'm going to give you some examples. Next slide. Take. Who is that? What is that? David and Goliath. It's a very famous story, right? You want to know why it's famous? Because it's a hero story. It's a hero story. We love a good hero story. And David is the hero of this story. But he's not a superhero. He's not the world's definition of a hero. He is God's definition of a hero. Because what he did is he didn't let his fear get the best of him. He chose to love others more than himself and stood up to the Philistine army he stood up for God, and he cared more about his country, Israel, than he did his own life. And God rewarded him for it. Let me explain. David is, was just a sheep herder, okay? He took care of sheep. Yes, he had to be strong. He was probably stronger than me or a lot of the guys in this room because he had to fend off animals like lions and, I don't know, coyotes and whatever. Um, it even says he killed a lion in the Bible, but... Yeah, he was strong, but he was just a sheep herder. But compared to Goliath, Goliath was an actual giant, okay? It doesn't say in the Bible, but it says in some other Jewish scripture that I read that he's approximately nine feet, six inches tall. He was that tall. And he wasn't just skinny. He was full of muscle. In the Bible, it says he was the Philistine army's champion. And that means that he was gifted at fighting, and gifted at taking lives. That means he was good at killing. So if you had to face someone like that, would you be scared? Yeah. Of course. Of course, David was scared. It doesn't say that in the Bible, but he did not let his fear get the best of him. And when Goliath was insulting God and insulting his people, he got so angry and he put God, his faith in God first, and he faced Goliath because his whole excuse me, the whole country, his whole country of Israel was too afraid to face him, even the king. And 1 Samuel 17, 45, this is David answering Goliath. He said, David answered, you have come out to fight me with a sword and a spear and a dagger, but 
I've come out to fight you in the name of the Lord, all powerful. He is the God of Israel's army, and you have insulted him too. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. You didn't have to clap for that, but I'll take it. I'll take it. So he stood up and he thought of others before himself, and God rewarded him. And he is a hero to this day. God's version of a hero. We all know his story, and that story was thousands of years ago. Okay? That's amazing. But because I know that that story was so long ago and it's in the Bible, and I'm not saying you guys all think this, but it's kind of easy for us to assume that, that was, that's legend. That's folklore. That's not real because it was so long ago and it was in some pages in the Bible. So because of that, I want to prove to you of some actual God version heroes that are living today. Okay, next slide. This is, you guys know who that is? Of course not. No, that's not Trevor. <laughs> this, this guy is named Carson Zikraf, and I'm going to explain to you why he's considered a hero. After one family lost their son to suicide, they didn't have the strength to decorate for Christmas. Then a stranger, Carson Zikraf, stepped in to decorate their house with Christmas lights. Zikraf makes it his mission to find families affected by suicide and bring them some holiday cheer. He doesn't know the families he decorates for, and he doesn't ask for anything in return. He always wishes he could do more for them. So this guy saw pain in somebody's family because some family member took their own life. And he saw that they were hurting, and he didn't know how to help. The best thing he could see was, okay, they don't want to deal with Christmas. They don't want to decorate. I'll decorate for them. I'll try and give him some kind of joy. He didn't know if it was going to work or not, but what did he do? Oh, you're the best. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So what did he do? He decided that he was going to decorate. And he wishes he could do more. But it impacted people because I heard about it. I don't even know this guy. I looked up heroes in the internet and he popped up. So he did something so, that seemed so insignificant, but because he was selfless and because he showed love to complete strangers, people consider him a hero. It was moving. Next slide. Isn't that a great picture? Yeah. So this, this guy's name, this little boy is named Austin Perrine, and I'm going to explain to you who Austin is. After driving past the local homeless shelter with his dad, Austin wanted, to, Austin wanted to do something to put a smile on the faces of those he had seen suffering. He used his allowance money to buy Burger King sandwiches to pass out to the homeless. He handed out each meal with a smile and said, don't forget to show some love. After dipping into his allowance to feed the homeless for a few weeks, his story went viral. Burger King heard about it and decided to chip in to help Austin's cause. Him and his family now run the Show Love Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to fighting homelessness. Yeah, that's awesome, right? <laughs> I love it. Um, so, to recap, this is a little boy, okay? This little boy doesn't make his own money. This little boy doesn't take care of himself. He lives with his parents. Whatever money he has, his parents give him. But his parents took him to a homeless shelter, and this little boy saw some pain, saw some suffering, and he was like, I want to do something. I want to help. What can a little boy like that do? At least that's what most people think. So what he did, he didn't let that stop him. Instead, with whatever he had, which was some money, very little, he decided, I'm going to buy some Burger King sandwiches and try and at least put a smile on their faces. And he did it. And I can pretty much assure you that God blessed him for it because look at that little thing that he did, and now he runs with his family a foundation to fight homelessness. Do you, do you think that someone like that could have done something on his own without God? That's a no, okay? That's a big no. God blessed him because he was not selfish. 
he thought of others and loved others more than himself. And I'm telling you these stories, friends, because I'm trying to show you that if a little boy like that can do it, every single one of you can be God's version of a hero in your own lives, okay? It doesn't matter what you're born like, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter your limits. You can, if you show love to someone more than you show love to yourself, it will impact people. People will be moved by it. You'll inspire people, and God will bless it. That's a promise. You guys believe me? Good. I'm so glad. So who wants to be God's version of a hero? Love it. Love it. Amen. Praise God. All right, friends, let's bow our heads. God Almighty, I am so, so blessed by every single person who's here because they love you, because they love this ministry. I thank you for giving us an opportunity to learn more about you and what you expect of us as followers of Jesus Christ. I pray that we have the courage and the wisdom to continue to walk the way that Jesus walked here. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. All right, friends, thank you for listening.